Hi, I'm Dr. David Ireland, the lead pastor of Christ Church. I'm amazed that this pandemic has resulted in us having this virtual, this virtual service, but it's impactful. In fact, take this moment right now and send this link to family members and friends. You'll be amazed how worship, the Word, and this virtual experience really impacts people. And that's why I love the presence of God. It meets us anywhere and everywhere. And so that's why we offer not only this experience, but if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as follow us on our social media channel, or visit us at our website, ChristChurchUSA.org, any one of those venues will give you access to our other worship experiences, whether it may be a few minutes of prayer that we offer, or it may be a midweek Bible study that is engaging. We want you to be a part of this. But get ready for the worship experience. Open your heart wide. The Holy Spirit's about to just take over right now. Hey family, welcome to Christ Church Online 1130 service. We're so excited to have you join us for a new worship and word experience. It's such a blessing to be able to virtually gather together for a time in God's presence. Absolutely, technology is an amazing thing. Although we can't gather together physically, we're still able to connect with you and we're so grateful to see our community committed to staying together during these trying times. And if you're new to our community, we'd love to connect with you and see you become part of our family. If you text the word eConnect to the number on your screen, you'll get to know us a little better and receive a little more information and some free resources designed for your spiritual growth. Wait, what, what was that word again, Laura? eConnect. Oh, got it. Without further ado, let's join our worship team in the Q Chapel. Goodness. 
So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though a mighty army surrounds me, my heart will not be afraid. Even if I am attacked, I will remain confident. this afternoon I'm just thinking about how David's request is to say that the Lord is my light and I feel like 
in the B section of Psalm 27, the revelation comes to him. The one thing that I ask of the Lord and the thing I seek the most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And it says, if God took all of the fears, all of the anxiety, and gave this fresh new revelation, and that is to ask God for the thing that our hearts are really after, and that is to dwell in his presence all the days of our lives. And that's what we're here to do right now. Father, we just, we thank you for revealing your light. We thank you for your truth. Your truth is so clear that you are with us and that you're surrounding us and that you want us to fix our eyes on you.
a moment to drink in his goodness. Remember all the times that God has been good to you. Maybe some moments stick out more than others. But every day of our lives, it says that his goodness and his mercy endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. 
I am a good God. That was an amazing worship experience. My heart was just on fire for God. I want you now to realize that worship includes giving. So on the screen, there's a giving tab that we'd like for you to press that link and it'll take you to safe and secure mediums for you to be able to give your gifts. We are a tithing people. That is, we give God 10% of what we earn and we also provide the Lord an offering. So an offering is anything above and beyond that 10%. We're not giving to the church, we're giving through the church. And so though we're not physically together, we still recognize that we are, are, are a community of believers. And so we're supporting each other as we live missional lives to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to others. Thank you for your big heartedness and your generosity. And I want you, as you finish your giving, get ready for a short worship piece right before the word. May I pray for you? Father, bless each person as they give their gifts. Let your generosity be poured out to them beyond expectation. In Christ's name, amen.
you're never gonna let me down. I believe you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let you're never gonna let me down. You never quit on us, so God. You never failed, and you never will. You never failed, and you never will. You never failed. I like to pray before I teach, and so let's bow our hearts together. Father, thank you so much for this moment as I minister to people in their respective homes across the country, overseas. I pray the power of the Holy Spirit will transform each of us. In Christ's name, amen. My topic today is walking with the shepherd during COVID-19. One of the most beautiful psalms in the Bible is Psalm 23. That's where I want you to open your Bibles to. And if you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, then simply let's have a watch party. And YouTube, send a link to a friend or family. You may be the only person in your family that cares for the spiritual well-being of your family or friends. And so connect with them. So at this moment, as I open God's Word, the healing that comes, the anchor and stability that comes during times of global unrest will also be experienced by those family members and friends. COVID-19, as you know, is a global problem. Every nation, every family, every church, every person is experiencing this sense of adversity. My question becomes, how do we have relevance how do we have stability during this time? And I look to the Bible because crises doesn't make God nervous. And he has been through and has walked people through, his ancient people through crises, and so he's going to walk us through this as well. In fact, what I've learned and discovered is that crises, even global pandemic, doesn't make the Bible irrelevant. In fact, just the opposite. God and the Bible are more relevant because the Bible captures God's actions and behavior down through history during times of global unrest and even personal crises. In fact, I want to take you to one of those. Psalm 23 was written by David. He was king of Israel at the time. And when he wrote the 23rd Psalm, which is referred to as the Shepherd Psalm, it was during a time where his son, Absalom, had formed a coup to overthrow David. And so it was this major unrest that has gone through the entire nation, political, social, economic unrest. And David was fearful of being assassinated, so he didn't know who to turn to, who he can trust. And he then penned this psalm. The beautiful thing about this psalm is this. David, before being king, was a shepherd. His dad, Jesse, was also a shepherd. So he's the son of a shepherd, was a shepherd himself, and now he's writing to us about God, our shepherd. Let's look at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. 
my cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I want you to see that David, he's opening up his heart wide to us. And throughout the Bible, it always uses this metaphor of sheep to describe God's people. So, I'm a sheep. You're a sheep. We're sheep. And I don't want you to look at it in an insulting way, because that's not what God means nor infers. Sheep have a tendency to be very skittish, frightened easily. And that's what COVID-19 has the ability to frighten us, afraid. And there's a part of fear that we ought to be afraid, but not to the place where we cower and we are unable to even look beyond today to think about tomorrow. David, though he was being chased and pursued by Absalom to kill him, and to overthrow his kingdom, David comes to this place where he's saying, let me tell you how I feel as I'm going through this unrest. I want to give you three tips today as to how you can walk with God, the shepherd, during this global pandemic with COVID-19. I'm going to look at three of the verses here in Psalm 23. Why? So you may be able to feel confident, comfortable, and secure in the arms of our shepherd. Psalm 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. This verse and the way David penned it was something that was a shocker in ancient Israel. Ancient Israel referred to God only as our God, a national God, a public God. David is saying, my shepherd, personalizing. He's saying that God is not just the God of everybody. He's my God. My first tip to you is this, expect God's provision. David placed his eyes and his expectation on God. He called him my God. And the word God there, or the Lord, the word Lord there, in that verse is the Hebrew word Yahweh, which means the God who's absolutely faithful. And so David says, God, you are absolutely faithful. You are my shepherd. I lack nothing. So David's expectation is that God, because you're my shepherd, you're caring for me. You're, you're the one that's, that's, that's with me. You're the one that watches over my soul and the welfare of my life. There's nothing, absolutely nothing that I lack or long for or want or look for. My hope and my trust is implicitly, implicitly in you, Lord. And David's saying, I'm placing my expectation in you because you know what I need. And because you're my shepherd, I lack nothing. Lacking nothing means content in God's care of me. Wherever you are right now, whether you're having to take care of your little ones at home because it's almost like homeschooling and you're feeling as if I'm ill-prepared, I'm ill-equipped, I'm running, I'm running impatient. I want you to know this verse is for you, that this verse says you lack nothing. So I want you now to dig deep and say, God, give me the patience that I need in order to be able to be that quasi-teacher or even the superintendent or the principal in my home with my little ones as we're going through this crisis together. I want you to see how important it is. I remember it was a couple of years ago I got this frightening phone call from a wife of a pastor out west, pastor, mega church. She called me frantically. She called me from the hospital. She said to me, David, my husband, he just had a stroke and I'm in the hospital. And her, her and her husband, they have three children. They were teenagers at the time. 
And she said, what am I going to do? And so I calmed her down and gave her some steps as to what to do to take care of her kids as the doctors and the medical community is taking care of her husband at the hospital. And then the conversation changed. This was a Friday evening. Church was on Sunday. Multiple services. No backup plan. No succession plan. Emergency. I said, put me on to the executive pastor and let me talk with him. And I remember he was the one that was going to preach. He said, I don't even know what I'm going to preach. And he's panicking. And I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to preach the 23rd Psalm. This is a shepherd psalm. Your congregation, who is experiencing a shock right now, all they need to know is this. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. See, sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. You don't know what to think. And all of us are like that with COVID-19. But I want you to see that the Lord is our shepherd. Jesus said it in John 10, 11. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I want you to surrender your fears to God. Your security is not in our government. And I'm thankful for this this great economic package that was passed through the Senate. I'm wonderful. Two trillion dollars is a lot of money. But yet, though I'm thankful and grateful for this economic stimulus, the Lord is my shepherd. And I lack nothing. I expect nothing. God to be my provider. If you agree, send me some love right now. Hit the heart emoji. Press like and let that flow because we need to see, like the great English preacher Charles Spurgeon once said, we have all things and abound, not because I have a good store of money in the bank, not because I have skill and wit with which to win bread, but because the Lord is my shepherd. First tip is this, expect God's provision. So I'm asking, how do you walk with the shepherd during COVID-19? Verse 2 tells us, he, that's God, makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. When I read this verse, as a sheep in God's pasture, the second tip that emerges from the text is this, accept God's guidance. Scripture says that God makes me lie down in green pastures. The shepherd's job is to keep the sheep on the move or rotating of pastures. And they're not doing it in a hurried way. They recognize the propensity of sheep. Sheep have their favorite spots. And so when they keep eating at the same clump of grass, grazing in the same pasture, they eat the grass so much so that they now get down to the bare bones, so to speak, and that's where there's a susceptibility for parasites and and all kinds of things to emerge from that part of the soil that will infect and infest the sheep. And so what the shepherds do, they lead the sheep so they don't get stuck in one place. The same way me as a local pastor... My job is not to preach on the same Bible passage every week, every month, every year because it's my favorite. Certainly, I have favorite verses, as do you. But if I teach on the same passage all the time, we're going to have fallen into a trap which is referred to as error by emphasis. We emphasize something so much so we fall into error. And so the job of the shepherd is, is to move the sheep around. And so we ought to accept God's guidance. God doesn't leave us to fend for ourselves during tough times. Sheep will not lie down as long as they're hungry or in need of finding food. Their stomachs are growling. They won't feel comfortable. They won't lie down. So the job of the shepherd who knows that and understands the, the, the instinct and the behavior of sheep The job of the shepherd is to guide the sheep to a place where they can graze, where they can eat, where they can feel comfortable. And for that to happen, for you to be able to accept God's guidance, you got to stay close to God 
especially during times of crisis. Don't let your devotional time lag. That's why I've been challenging members of Christ's church. Let's read together through Acts, the book of Acts. Because that book of Acts shows us how God works during crisis. It shows us the fast actions, how the early church, they survived and strengthened and grew and flourished. What would happen if we as Christ's church, when this whole pandemic is over, no restrictions to stay in your home is there, and we're able to meet together physically again. What would happen if each of us brought one person to church with us because we've been ministering to that person and loving on them and caring for them during this pandemic through acts of kindness and compassion and doing life together and using social media and FaceTime to talk with them? What would happen when we come back together? It's not just the same people. It's more. Why? Because we realize that when we stayed close to the shepherd, we became more like our shepherd. That's why you always see people hanging around Jesus. Because something came out of Jesus. Comfort, wisdom, guidance, strength, affirmation. They liked being with Jesus. And even the ones that disliked him, they still wanted to hang around him. It's amazing how Jesus is. I remember several Christmases ago, our music ministry came up with a bright idea. They said, let's put some live animals in the Christmas concert. And then they said, let's put sheep in the concert. That means that in the building, there'll be sheeps walking around on stage. And so someone got the, the phone number for a farmer in New Jersey that has sheep, a flock. So my wife and I had the responsibility to go and check out this farmer because he rents out sheep so that people that want a sheep for whatever, their concert or maybe for kids to play with for a party, they can have sheep. So I go there and I pull my car up at the top of the driveway. I didn't know if they had dogs roaming around. So it's a farm. I pull up at the top of the driveway. Here comes this farmer and he's dressed in a proverbial overalls. And so he has a little lamb next to him. It's about this high. And so as the farmer is walking, the lamb, and he called the lamb Dolly. Dolly started to graze over there, and as she ran close to him and rubbing right against his leg. And he says, come here, Dolly. Come here, Dolly. And wherever the farmer went, Dolly was there. Dolly was accepting the farmer's guidance through the voice. And then I figured, since the book of John says that my sheep know my voice, I wanted to see if Scripture is true. So when the farmer wasn't looking, he's talking to my wife. I said, Dolly, come here. Dolly didn't even look up. So I raised my voice a little bit louder. Dolly, come here. Dolly ignored me. See, sheep know the voice of the shepherd. And what David was penning for us is this. During times of crisis, in order for you to accept God's guidance, listen for and look for the voice of God to speak to you in the midst of this pandemic. And I want you to see that God is able to uh, guide us with even in this limited social, political, economic unrest, sheep follow the shepherd during these times. And that's what God is doing. And I want you then to listen for and look for the Lord to guide you. And so this is extremely important for you and for me during times of unrest. And so we must recognize this. Expect God's provision. Second tip I offer you. Accept God's guidance. I want you to look at verse 4 now. Because David said this, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He's walking through a dark valley. His very own son, Absalom, is trying to kill him. What does David say? David says, God, this valley is dark. It's uncertain. It's unclear. It's, it's unpredictable. But I do know this, that even though I'm walking through this dark valley, you are there to comfort me. This third tip that emerges from this text is this. Enjoy God's comfort. 
as we're walking with the shepherd during this global pandemic of the coronavirus, I expect more than anything to enjoy God's comfort. These dark valleys, it features, they're unknown, they're uncertainties. It's unpredictable events. See, the the defenseless sheep trusted that their shepherd could lead them out of the shadows shadows of the dark valley to safety and security. They trusted that. And we must do the same. We must not forget that God uses everything. He uses good times. He uses bad times to make us into his holy people. Don't limit God to the God of paradise. He's also the God when times feel like there's persecution. He's not just the God of peace times. He's the God during war times. He's not just the God during times of comfort. He's the God during times of COVID-19. And during times of COVID-19, I'm asking God, God, help me to enjoy your comfort. He wants to make you into his holy people, powerful, strong, some people that can bounce back in all kinds of adversity. C.S. Lewis, the great English philosopher, says, hardship prepares ordinary people for an extraordinary destiny. May I give you that word? You are not going to fall apart because of COVID-19. You are not going to be fear-stricken and bound up. God has plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. And God wants you to enjoy his comfort during this stage. And so when we walk together with the king, we realize this. Let me read verse 4 again to you. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What a powerful word that David penned. The shepherd is well prepared to comfort the sheep during dark valleys. He has two implements. He has a rod and he has a staff. They work differently. They play different roles. The shepherd's rod is a weapon of power. A weapon, it's it's also an implement of authority. It's a weapon of power because it it protects the defenseless sheep against predators. When wolves would come during those dark moments to try to to, to eat one of the sheep or to, to, you know, just to take one of the lambs, here comes the shepherd with his rod and he would beat that wolf because that's what the rod does. The rod, it not only protects the flock from predators, It also provides control to the flock if they're meandering about and not going where they need to go. Because remember now, the job of the shepherd is to guide the sheep through the dark valley. And if you are meandering around, God's saying, look, I want you to stop doing that. Don't don't start watching porn when you're home because you're on this travel ban. And God hits you with that rod. Get, get back to your devotional time. Don't, 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 don't call your old girlfriend. Don't, don't call your ex. You don't need to do that. Get, get back to where you need to be. And the rod, it's there not to abuse, but to guide. And so I want you to see that the Holy Spirit says the shepherd is well equipped to guide us into this place of comfort. Two implements, the rod and also the staff. The staff plays a different role. In fact, there are three functions for the staff. And the staff draws the sheep together into an intimate relationship. That's why you have that big handle on it. And so it just draws that sheep back into it. In fact, if you've been reaching out to friends and family more than ever to check on them, to connect with them, to stay close with them during this pandemic, I want you to confirm that and hit that like emoji And let the heart flow so that the heart emoji was be able to just flow up to say, that's what I've been doing. I've been been being a community builder in my own context. And it's so critical. I mentioned that the purpose of the staff is threefold. One, it's to bring the sheep together 
in intimate relationship, connectedness, community. Second, the staff is to use gently to lift up a newborn so that the shepherd doesn't touch it because if the shepherd touches it with his hands, the scent of the shepherd affects the, the mom, the mother sheep from connecting with the lamb. And so the shepherd uses the, the, the staff and picks it up and puts it next to its mother. That's what you must do during this time when you're disconnected from people physically and even as a local church community. Call people, talk with them, lift up the little ones that are there, the, the young believers, the immature believers, and bring them closer to Jesus. Maybe have a devotional time with them over the phone for five minutes or social media, form a little group, do small groups using, using chat rooms and using things like, like Zoom. It's amazing how God can use social media that when we're far away geographically, it makes us close physically and emotionally. It is amazing. Third purpose of the staff is used to, is, it's used then to draw the sheep, young and old, to the shepherd to inspect them. And so the Lord brings us closer, brings us close to inspect, to make sure there's no ticks, no lice, to make sure we're free from parasites. I want you to see that the purpose of the rod and the staff, it's all about helping us to enjoy God's comfort. What also comforts the sheep during these dark valleys is hearing the voice of their master and hearing the voice of their shepherd. That's why it's so important even nowadays that we talk and we connect. And that's why I'm even now preaching from an empty sanctuary when you're normally here sitting and enjoying the word because I want you to hear my voice because that just somehow brings us closer together and stays walking with one another as we grow through this pandemic together. I want to quote Charles Spurgeon again. He's one of my favorite historical preachers, if you have not known that by now. Spurgeon wisely observed, God is too good to be unkind, and he's too wise to be mistaken. And when we cannot trace his hand, we must trust his heart. In other words... Sometimes I don't know what God's doing in the midst of a crisis. I don't know all of what God's going to do through this pandemic with, with COVID-19. I don't know. But one thing I do know is this. I've walked with God too long. I've read the Bible too much. I've talked with Christ followers who are even stronger than me in their devotion and their relationship with God to have learned too much about God that He's too good to be unkind and he's too wise to be mistaken. And when we can't trace his hand, we must trust his heart. And so I want to leave you with this word, and that is, to walk with a shepherd during COVID-19, these are three simple tips. Expect God's provision. Accept God's guidance. And enjoy God's comfort. I want you to bow your heart with me, please. And if you have never before invited Jesus Christ into your life, you need to do that right now, right here. In fact, right where you are, pray with me the simple prayer. Heavenly Father, I now realize I need you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I want you to be my shepherd. I want to be a sheep in your flock. Wash away my sins change me and help me to walk with you every day of my life starting right now. I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for our time of ministry together. I look forward to ministering to you on Wednesdays during the 2020 experience. And if you just prayed that simple prayer with me, just simply follow the instruction on the screen. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. Have a great day. If you prayed to receive Jesus today, I want to congratulate you in this life-changing decision. You might have some questions about what's next. We want to make sure we're there to answer those questions. So text the word NEXT to the number on the screen and we'll send you all the resources that you need to help you understand this awesome decision you made to follow Christ. Wow, wasn't that an amazing experience today? 
I know, and I hope you were inspired and encouraged during this time of connection with the Lord. The best part is we don't have to wait until next week to reconnect. That's right. Ministry is still happening here every single day, from our online devotional for kids and teens on Mondays to the 2020 experience where we have 20 minutes of hope via an online Bible study on Wednesdays and 20 minutes of prayer via our prayer call on Fridays. All these ministry opportunities take place at 7.15 p.m. And don't forget, our college and young adult ministries are still meeting. We're reading through the book of Acts together as a community. For more information, visit us at ChristChurchUSA.org slash staying together. You'll get all the information you need there. Everything we're able to do is through the faithfulness of our community given to God through the church. So if you were moved by this experience today, would you consider giving to our Love Fuel ministry? Check out the links below and see the various ways that you can easily and securely give. Thank you for joining us on CC Online. If you're blessed by this experience, please share this sermon to encourage others and help spread the hope of Jesus Christ through social media. Also, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on social media at Christ Church USA. You can also tell your family and friends now about our worship experience coming up later today. Check out our online worship schedule and invite them. Hey, Laura, have a great week. Hey, Danny, great social distancing. Thank you.